fractions. If that's what you were thinking, then you are going to love this lesson because we are going to be covering a technique called clearing fractions, which is basically gonna help you not have to work with fractions when solving equations. Okay, if you are given a problem like this, you might be thinking, okay, well, let's solve for x, subtract one third from both sides of the equation, then I have to deal with this two thirds x, uh, multiply by three halves, or divide by th two thirds, whatever, get x by itself, and solve. Which you would be right, that would work, but let me show you the concept of clearing fractions. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply each side of the equation by three. Now if we distribute this three out, we're gonna get three times two thirds x plus three times one third. And doing this four thirds times three on the right, we're gonna get four thirds times three. Now this is where it gets beautiful. Before we start multiplying these in, I want you to see this. Three times two thirds is divided by three we can take this three divided by three and just cross those out because three divided by three is one. That's gonna leave us with two x. Same thing over here. Three divided by three is gonna just leave us with that one plus one. Same thing on the right side. This four thirds times three, that three divided by three is gonna cancel out leaving us with just one times four, which is gonna be equal to four. Oh, no more fractions. From here we can solve like normal, subtract one, we get two x equals three, and dividing that two out, we're gonna get x equals three halves. Let's try one that's a little more interesting. Here we've got four fifths plus three halves x equals seven. Okay, now if we multiplied by five, these fives would cancel out, but we are kind of stuck as far as this two goes. Well, what if we multiplied by two? Well. Our twos would be taken care of, but then what about this divided by five, this four fifths? We're not gonna be able to do anything with that. All right, get ready, I'm about to blow your mind. What if I multiplied each side of the equation by 10? That would be the common denominator or the least common denom multiple of the denominators. Distributing this 10 out, we're gonna get 10 times four fifths plus 10 times three halves x equals seven times 10. Now this time it looks like this 10 divided by five is still not gonna cancel itself out, leaving us with just a one on top, but we can do 10 divided by five and leave ourselves with a two. Same thing over here, we could do 10 divided by two, leaving us with a five. And on the right side of the equation, we have no fraction, no denominator, so we're just gonna leave this times 10 all by itself. Now simplifying some things out, we have two times four, that gives us eight, plus five times three, which gives us 15 x, equals seven times 10, which is 70. Oh, <coughs> ah, I gotta work on my angelic singing voice. Anyhow, fractions are gone. Now we do some basic solving. Subtract eight, giving us 15 x equals 62, and divide out that 15, we'll get x equals 62 over 15. And since that cannot simplify, that's gonna be our final solution. So here's a quick summary of clearing fractions. Find your common denominator, or the LCM, least common multiple of the denominators, multiply that to both sides of the equation, clear out your fractions, smile, and then solve. Here we've got Q plus 4 thirds equals 1 fourth Q minus 1 half. First, what's our common denominator? What's the least common multiple of all these guys down here? We've got three, four and two. All right, well, eight is gonna work for four and two, but not three, what about 12? All right, three can go into 12, four can go into 12, and two can go into 12. So let's go ahead and multiply each side of the equation by 12. Distributing that in, we have 12Q plus 12 times four thirds equals 12 times one fourth Q minus 12 times one half. Okay, let's clear these guys out. 12 and three, gonna leave us with four. 12 divided by four, it's gonna leave us with three. And then 12 divided by two, leaves us with six. From there, let's rewrite our equation without fractions. 12Q plus four times four, 16, equals three times one, three Q, minus six times one, six. Now we just need to solve. Subtracting our three Q over gives us nine Q plus 16 equals negative six. 
Then moving the 16 over to the right, subtract it. 9q equals negative 22. And dividing that 9 out, we get q equals negative 22 over 9. All right, last one, just in case you come across something where you have a fraction multiplying across a group. Now feel free to distribute this out and then clear your fractions, but if you want to save even more time, you can treat each of these like a separate term. Whenever you're multiplying, it only counts as one term. So we can proceed like normal. I'm going to multiply each side of the equation by 6, which is my common denominator or my least common multiple of 3 and 2. That's going to give me 6 times 2 thirds x plus 1. This 6 does not distribute into both the fraction and the parentheses. It just needs to multiply out front. Equals 6 times 1 half x minus 2. My 6 and 3 are going to cancel out, leaving me with a 2 on top. My 6 and 2 over here cancel, leaving me with a 3. Multiplying that in, I have 2 times 2, which is 4 times x plus 1, equals 3 times 1, which is 3 times x minus 2. Then let's solve. Distribute this 4 out, we get 4x plus 4. Distribute the 3 equals 3x minus 6. Subtract the 3x over, and we're left with x plus 4 equals negative 6. And subtract the 4, we're left with x equals negative 10.